So just by way of background, um, I am the Chief Scientific Officer and Founder of Renovate Limited. Um, my background is in cell biology. I'm uh, an academic by training and I have interests in growing stem cells and uh, studying their development into neurons. And I've used cell culture technologies for many years. And it's really uh, working with cell cultures at first hand that led me to ultimately develop Alvatex technology for three-dimensional cell culture. Mainly because I was quite uh, frustrated at the time by the limited and restricted nature of conventional 2D methods. So I'm going to tell you today about Arbitex and its specific application for cancer cytotoxicity. So the presentation will first of all introduce what 3D culture is all about. It will then uh, define Arbitex. We'll then go on to the actual cancer cytotox application itself. Uh, after that, I will go through a series of slides to show how our test is compatible with existing cell and molecular technologies that you are likely to use in your laboratories. We'll uh, finish with a question and answer session, and you can type in your questions in the Q&A box as we go through the uh, presentation. Uh, and at the end as well, I will introduce you to our website where you can sign up for a free evaluation of uh, Alvatex uh, technology. Okay, so without further ado, let's start. So let's first of all talk about um, how cells uh, grow in normal tissues in vivo in the body. So in vivo, of course, cells are in 3D uh, with their neighboring cells and the extracellular matrix. And of course, that uh, is the normal natural configuration of cells and tissues. We deconstruct these uh, relationships uh, in vitro and we grow cells in uh, petri dishes and at that time, the cells come into contact with the flat surface. They uh, adapt to that environment. They flatten. And it's well known in the uh, scientific uh, community that when cells undergo that transformation, they remodel their cytoskeleton. And this impacts on gene and protein transcription and translation. And ultimately, this affects cell function. So at best, you have a restricted model of uh, cell uh, growth differentiation and function in a conventional 2D culture uh, setup. And we can see this in more detail, whereby if you consider a, a monolayer of cells, you'll see that uh, an individual cell will have up to 50% of its surface against the polystyrene substrate, or up to 50% against the medium. Our cells require a flattened morphology, and the interaction between cells is minimized. Certainly, there is no real opportunity for forming complex uh, three-dimensional shapes, and certainly not complex three-dimensional interactions with uh, adjacent cells, as you would see in vivo. If you consider a single cell, and image it via confocal microscopy. So this is a fibroblast, and its cytoskeleton has been illuminated using phylloidin uh, for the F-actin uh, elements. And you can see in, um, in 2D on the left how um, the uh, cells have a very flattened um, appearance. Whereas in 3D, uh, the images on the right, you'll see that it's three-dimensional all the way around. And this is also an effect which is uh, visualized with the nucleus. You'll see again the nucleus in 2D is very thin, whereas it's spherical in 3D. And these 3D images are actually from Alvatex technology. And this is nothing new uh, in the sense that cell shape is known to affect uh, gene and protein uh, transcription translation and uh, function. And here are a couple of examples of 
uh, papers published independently showing this. So basically, what we set about to do is to develop a technology that uh, acts as a solution for simple and routine three-dimensional cell culture to stop that shape change from occurring as it does in 2D systems. And it's a technology that recreates a more natural environment for three-dimensional cell culture such that cells resemble their in vivo counterparts. And the two images which are shown on this slide uh, clearly show uh, the relationship, uh, the close relationship between uh, these cells and they are from the same cell type either grown in vitro, in Alvatex, or in vivo, having been engrafted into uh, uh, mouse tissue. And you'll see that uh, they are very indistinguishable. So Alvatex technology uh, enables genuine 3D culture, increased cell viability, enhanced functionality, and is more representative of real tissues. And you can go to our website to find uh, a lot of additional applications for this technology. So what is Alvatex? If we look first of all at our uh, 2D situation along the top line, we'll see our vessels which everybody currently uses in uh, 2D culture, so flasks, petri dishes, etc. And cells growing as monolayers as shown in the uh, phase image. In 3D, in Alvatex, the cells literally grow on top of one another and create three-dimensional structures. And we've achieved this by introducing the third dimension into polystyrene. So we create a three-dimensional, highly porous polystyrene scaffold. Indeed, the scaffold is 90% porous. So most of the actual space, most of the actual scaffold volume, if you like, is actually space, space in which cells can occupy. And you'll see the histological image there on that 3D line of the cells within the scaffold. The scaffold itself is engineered into a 200 micron thick membrane. And you can see uh, scanning electron micrograph images along the bottom. And the middle one shows a high magnification image. And on the uh, right at the bottom, you'll see a scaffold which has got cells within it. So this is a SEM again, and it's showing you uh, a scaffold full of cells, and it represents almost a, a miniature slab of tissue uh, in your uh, culture vessel. So Alvatex is currently available in plate and well format, uh, and well insert formats, I should say. So the top line shows uh, the 12 well and the 24 well plate. And uh, the bottom left image shows the uh, six well insert. We also have this device which we've developed to hold well inserts inside a petri dish, and that's the bottom right image. So the presentation of the scaffold is also important. And if we look at this slide, we can see in panel A how in the well uh, of a plate, you'll see that the Alvatex is on the bottom of the. Uh, of the well, and here the uh, cells receive nutrition from the media above, whereas in the well insert format in panel B, cells receive nutrition from above and below. In panel C, we see uh, a mock up of what the petri dish uh, represents. So that's the photograph in the bottom left, there's the petri dish with the three inserts in. And we've developed this so that you can culture your cells in 3D in much larger volumes of medium. And that's important if you wanted to condition the media or you didn't want to change your media so regularly or you wanted to, didn't want to disturb your culture for, uh, for as frequently. So it, it, we, we designed these technologies with uh, versatility in mind for the user. Okay, so does Alvatex work? Well, we have uh, a great wealth of data uh, which has uh, been generated in-house from, from our R&D scientists and also in collaboration with um, uh, academic colleagues and industrial partners, but also very much now from our customers, customers who have acquired Alvatex and used it in their laboratories independently to generate 
their own data for their own purposes and they're now presenting these results at independent scientific meetings and indeed publishing their data in peer-reviewed journals. So Arbitex is becoming now widespread and it's used for many reasons to affect cell growth and differentiation, the function of cells, to create novel models and assays and to create uh, more complex organized tissues. So let's switch then to today's focus, a specific application regarding the routine assessment of cancer cell cytotoxicity using Albatex technology. So the few slides I'm going to show you are aimed to demonstrate that using Albatex we can create three-dimensional cellular morphologies that more closely represent the structure of tissues grown in vivo, so structures which are similar to uh, xenografts, uh, to compare the viability of uh, tumor cells with conventional 2D cultures uh, and to demonstrate indeed that viability is enhanced in 3D and also then to challenge those cells in 3D culture with uh, a range of known uh, cancer, anti-cancer reagents. I'll introduce those uh, as we go through. And then also to demonstrate how actually in a new format of Albatex we can practice uh, high throughput uh, uh, screening of cancer cells using Albatex technology. So our early work started off with a, a breast uh, tumor cell line, a well-known cell line uh, called NCF7. And we've demonstrated its viability in uh, Albatex. So these are, uh, this is an NTS, uh, sorry, an NTT uh, cell viability assay uh, over 21 days. And you can see the, uh, the population of cells uh, proliferating and expanding uh, in in vitro in Albatex. Uh, no, a linear expansion initially and then this plateaus after about two weeks where indeed we do reach confluency in uh, three dimensions and that's really a reflection of the all the three-dimensional space inside the scaffold now being occupied. So we can also visualize uh, cells uh, readily in Albatex, and there's numerous ways of doing that. And we have a white paper on our website which uh, shows the various ways in which you can look at cells and monitor the progression of your culture. One popular way to look at tissues, of course, is by histology. And these are uh, examples of histological analyses of NCS7 cells growing in uh, Albatex scaffold at 3, 7, 10, and 14 days. The images on the, uh, on the left column are in a lower mag and higher mag on in the right column. And you can see very clearly at uh, 14 days we're generating quite dense three-dimensional cultures. And we can show this at higher magnification. Um, and indeed, at uh, later time points, we get uh, structures which begin to resemble uh, xenograft-like uh, tissues from NCF7 cells having been uh, grown in uh, immune deficient animals. So um, in, uh, in our 2D situation, you'll see how uh, cells grow as monolayers. So that's in the NCF7 conventional 2D in vitro uh, image in the top left. And we can advance that significantly in vitro using Albatex enabling 3D culture. And that's what you see in the middle image on in the right column. And that uh, is closer to what we have in the animal, in vivo. So in a way, Albatex is a compromise uh, in between conventional uh, in vitro technology and uh, the in vivo situation, moving more closely to tissues which represent uh, the true structure of tumors it's in vivo. Uh, on the right we've got some higher mag images of the uh, xenograft itself in panel A, uh, higher mag image of the Albatex culture in B. And what we also find is that when the cells are growing uh, inside Albatex they also start to uh, produce extracellular matrix 
And in this case, uh, these cells, the SF7 cells, uh, we've detected uh, extracellular collagen being produced uh, by these um, cells. Okay. So once we've then created our uh, three-dimensional uh, culture, we can then challenge that with various uh, anti-cancer reagents. And this, in this example, what we've done is we've taken MCF7, we've only grown them for three days in Arbitex, and then we have exposed them to tamoxifen at various concentrations for either 24 or 72 hours. And you can see quite clearly how you can generate uh, these uh, kill curves based on uh, cell viability over drug concentration. And you'll notice distinct differences between two-dimensional and three-dimensional cell culture. Not surprisingly, um, a longer exposure period for the tamoxifen, i.e. 72 hours, results uh, in a lower concentration of the drug being used to induce uh, cell death. That would be as predicted. So from those curves, one can easily generate uh, IC50 values, and these should all be familiar to those of you doing uh, cell cytotoxicity assays. And we can generate the IC50s for 2D and 3D culture and note distinct differences. And indeed, uh, in some uh, areas, we have evidence that IC50 values in 3D cultures are more like the in vivo situation. We've also looked at uh, other uh, drugs, for example, uh, Paclitaxel and Doxorubicin. And um, again, this is just two examples, one at 24 hours, one at 72 hours exposure. Notice though in uh, panel A, this particular compound the uh, paclitaxel uh, actually uh, does have a toxic effect and reduces the number of uh, viable cells, but there is indeed a remaining cohort of cells which appear to be uh, resistant to the drug, uh, these concentrations used. And that's something which has uh, been demonstrated previously and is also shown in 2D culture. So in other experiments, we uh, enabled the 3D cultures to become more established. And we cultured the cells for 10 days prior to uh, uh, drug addition. And in this case, uh, we've used tamoxifen and doxorubicin. And again, you can see, even with the complex uh, or complex three-dimensional uh, uh, tumor-like structures, we can also affect their viability and test compounds readily on them. So as I mentioned, um, we have different formats of Alba text, and uh, we are currently preparing uh, for the launch of a 96-well plate of Alba text scaffold. And this is where uh, the uh, Alba text is presented at the base of a 96 well. And we anticipate launch for this new product uh, towards the end of this year. So we've been doing some uh, in-house work initially with the new prototypes. And this is focused on the optimization of 3D culture using this new plate format. We've worked with various cell types, including the colon carcinoma cell type SW620, and again, uh, the breast tumor cell type MCF7. And the reason I'm showing you this is because uh, it's interesting to note that different cell types behave in different ways in 3D culture. Um, and that's an important uh, point because it's important to uh, have that in mind when you're optimizing uh, your 3D system. Because cells have different uh, proliferation rates, they have different sizes, migratory ability, etc. So once the optimization is complete, uh, then um, one can proceed with the assays. And uh, we have online uh, a wealth of technical information to help you achieve that optimization. So working with the 96-well plate, we've done uh, numerous um, beta testing. 
uh, projects, and here, this is one of them. Uh, this is a, uh, a four-way collaboration uh, between uh, four independent uh, commercial companies. And the first one I'll introduce is a company called Onkatest, which is based in Germany. Uh, Onkatest are a, uh, a CRO organization specializing in oncology, and they have a unique collection of uh, tumor samples, which they maintain in mice, and have also uh, developed some novel uh, uh, tumor uh, cell lines. And they work with these uh, resources uh, specifically for clients and test uh, compounds, for example. Uh, the second uh, company involved is TCAN. I'm sure many of you will be uh, familiar with TCAN. They specialize in robotics and automa automation of uh, laboratory assays. I'm sure as well you've all heard of Promega. Promega specialize in the development and sale of cell and molecular biology kits. And in this case, we are using the uh, Cell Titer Glow kit to assess uh, cell viability. And that's done by a luminescence readout. And that is performed directly in the 96 well plate. And the fourth partner, of course, is Reinnovate ourselves. And we bring to the collaboration our Arbitex three dimensional cell culture technology. Okay, so first of all, um, I'd just like to uh, credit and acknowledge uh, Dr. Samir Dar from Onkatest, who has uh, basically done all this work uh, with the help of uh, the guidance from ourselves of 3D Culture, with uh, Promega's input of the kit, and also with TCAN's uh, robotic platform. And this was done with uh, Onkatest. Uh, uh, tumor cells and cell lines which they have developed in-house. So here are two examples of two independent um, tumor cells uh, been, having been exposed to three different compounds over a range of concentrations to generate these really nice tight uh, kill curves uh, having grown the cells in 3D using the Alvatex 96 well plate. So nice tight reproducible data now, Oncotest also uh, have used a, an assay which they have developed over many years, and it's become a, a real workhorse for them. And it's a, a good assay uh, to generate aggregates of cells um, in vitro uh, using a soft agar method. And the, you can see on the uh, left-hand side here of the schematic how the uh, aggregates of small colonies uh, of cells begin to form uh, in the material. Um, now, the soft agar assay certainly has its uses and has uh, generated uh, much useful data over the years. However, nowadays, uh, we're also looking to get much more out of an experiment and perform, uh, for example, multiplexing, where one can not only get readouts from, say, viability, but look at protein expression, uh, gene transcription, et cetera. And that is currently uh, limited uh, using um, the uh, soft agar approach, because it's difficult to extract uh, things from that assay. However, uh, an alternative, of course, is Albertext. And Albertext uh, enables three-dimensional cell culture. Remember, it's inert polystyrene and it is possible to extract uh, the protein, nucleic acid, and perform assays uh, using this approach. So uh, a side-by-side -side, uh, uh, comparison was performed. And you can see here that uh, the data from uh, Albertext and the soft agar assay is highly comparable. These are for two different uh, uh, cancer cell lineages, so non-small cell lung cancer and urinary bladder cancer over a range of concentrations of three different compounds. And again, nice, tight, robust uh, kill curves generated uh, in the 96 well plate. Now, what has also been done has been uh, looking at drug uh, addition uh, in isolation, but also in combination. And uh, these data, again, for Albertex and for the soft agar assay. 
and what we have again is uh, uh, much uh, much nice, nicer if you like in the Alvatex situation uh, reproducible curves nice and tightness variation whereas in the soft agar we're getting a bit of uh, a movement up and down in the curves as you can see so again uh, an advantage and we can go now to the summary of these initial uh, pilot studies which were performed and independent evaluation has demonstrated clearly that uh, data acquired from Alvatex, the Alvatex 3D format is very reproducible and it mimics and uh, compares favorably with the soft agar assay. It also uh, compares very favorably with the historical data sets uh, previously generated, which is obviously important. Um, it now adds that there's an added ability to do the three-dimensional cell culture and multiplexing assays, uh, as it says in the third bullet point. Um, in some instances, for specific uh, cell types, there was notably enhanced uh, cell viability in the uh, 96 well Alvatex cultures. And in addition, uh, although the results presented don't show this, the data do show that indeed Alvatex shows a broad dynamic range with significantly improved signal to background ratios compared to the uh, soft agar approach. So we are now developing additional cancer models. And here are some examples. So we have uh, NCF7, as I've mentioned, but we also have an additional breast cancer lineage, uh, the very popular NDA lineages. We also have uh, a client who we're collaborating with who we're generating a glioblastoma model for. Uh, and then there's prostate cancer, lung cancer, and colorectal. And if I can show you, uh, yes, very quickly, uh, here's a snapshot of some of the early data showing the A549 lung adenocarcinoma lineage growing in Alvatex scaffold. So uh, I think the bottom left uh, uh, histology image shows very clearly uh, the, uh, the growth of these cells uh, inside uh, the Alvatex scaffold. And once again, a very nice uh, uh, cell viability plot as the population of cells begins to expand in 3D culture. So uh, the evidence I presented plus uh, the wealth of evidence on our website will show you that Alvatex does indeed influence and enhance cell structure and function, influence the cell viability, the differentiation of cells and the ability to create more organized structures. So one of the other uh, applications you might be interested in in uh, tumor cell biology is uh, the maintenance of tumor cell slices, or slices of tissue, essentially, which can be generated using a vibratome. And I know that uh, several groups are interested in maintaining uh, intact pieces of tissue in vitro for various assays. It could be cell migration. It could be electrical recording, for example. Uh, if you're working, say, on the brain. So um, what, there, are, there are numerous ways in which uh, this can be used. So in this example, in the top image, we actually have a piece of uh, embryonic tissue which uh, is placed on top of Alvatex. And depending on the cells inside that piece of tissue, if they're migratory and proliferative, they can uh, move out and invade the three-dimensional scaffold. And then you maintain the three-dimensional uh, nature of the cells, but now in vitro. Now, certain uh, tissue slices won't do this, uh, depending on, as I say, the nature of the cells inside the material. And you can just therefore use the Alvatex as a highly porous membrane to support the tissue in vitro. And because it's so porous, it's actually uh, three times greater porosity than a, an existing uh, well insert, which contains a porous membrane, for example, a trans well and that is superior for enhancing and maintaining the viability of the cells in culture for longer periods. So it's an example of, again of how Alvatex could be used for alternative applications. So I just want to sort of finish off really by demonstrating to you how Alvatex can be used in uh, various ways. 
So one of the questions which is often asked is, well, how can I monitor my culture? How can I visualize my cells inside the material? Well, remember what it is that uh, we're trying to achieve. We're trying to create a three-dimensional structure. And often, if you are presented with a uh, biopsy from a patient or a piece of tissue from an animal, to visualize those cells, uh, one of the classic approaches would be to embed section and do histology. Uh, and I'll show you a little bit more data on that in a moment. However, we also appreciate that, you know, with cell culture, people want to see their cells and look down a conventional microscope. So this is a very simple method we've developed, which enables you to uh, visualize your uh, cells growing in Albatex uh, using a standard inverted uh, microscope, which more often than not is present in your cell culture laboratory. So it works by a simple uh, non-cytotoxic uh, dye called neutral red. You simply add that to your culture and you can see your cells down the microscope very clearly. And it shows and gives information about cell viability, the distribution of the cells across the Albatex membrane and the density of the culture. I have to also mention that actually once you start using Albatex, uh, you gain confidence and you don't have to do this on a regular basis. It's only really if you wish to during the optimization stages. So I've already introduced uh, histology. Uh, this is uh, an example of a histological uh, preparation. So in panel A, we've got the uh, disks of Albatex scaffold having been fixed. Uh, in this case, with uh, Abuin fixatives, but you can use paraffin and other formalin-based fixatives. Uh, in panel B, we have uh, those very discs having been now embedded in wax, paraffin wax, which is commonly used in histology. And then, of course, you can do microtome sectioning um, down to five micron thick sections quite comfortably, mount those onto then microscope slides and counter stain. And in fact, in panel C, you can see uh, six uh, microscope slides there representing cultures from four to 21 days. And as you go from left to right, you can see the cultures, uh, the actual 3D culture beginning to appear before your eyes. And of course, under the microscope, you can see very clearly the three-dimensional culture as in D. Now, that is an example of a completely full uh, Alphatex scaffold, and that's taken 21 days to produce. However, as I've already alluded to with that earlier MCF7 work, it is also feasible to achieve three-dimensional cell culture within a few days, within two to three days of seeding your cells. And you don't have to fill the entire scaffold uh, to achieve 3D culture. It can easily be achieved in the top 30 or so percent of the uh, scaffold membrane. So once you've uh, developed your culture, you can do all these uh, uh, standard uh, molecular and cell-based methods. So this is uh, immunocytochemistry, looking at uh, protein expression. The important thing to note is that in, under the uh, conditions shown here, um, there's no background. Uh, the, the antibody for Chi-67 shows cell proliferation within uh, the membrane for that particular cell type. And DAPI, of course, shows the nucleus. Um, some uh, antibodies, as we know, don't like paraffin uh, embedding and, and uh, formal indexation. So an alternative strategy is to embed in uh, optimal uh, cutting compound, OCT, and then a section on a uh, cryostat. So Albatex is compatible with this approach, and subsequently you can do immunocytochemistry as shown on the uh, right. Uh, confocal imaging I've already mentioned. It's also possible to do uh, uh, live cell imaging uh, using uh, Albatex technology, providing your cells are in some way illuminated with a fluorescent probe. Um, one other thing uh, I can also mention uh, is that you can get very nice uh, Z-stack optical sections through Albatex uh, using confocal uh, approaches. Uh, Albatex is also compatible with resin embedding and uh, transmission electron microscopy and as uh, shown on the uh, left, so that's an ultra-structural image 
of two cells communicating in 3D and the electron dense area in the middle of those two cells is actually a, a, a tight junction. On the right we have a scanning electron micrograph. So Arbitex, as I mentioned, is made of polystyrene and it's a very good substrate for three-dimensional cell culture. Uh, like polystyrene, like conventional uh, polystyrene in a flask or a multiwall plate, uh, you can coat the polystyrene with various well-known uh, cell culture reagents ranging from collagen, laminin, polyvelicin, uh, matrix gel, and so forth. Um, the beauty of doing it in 3D in Arbitex is actually you create, in many respects, a three-dimensional coating. Uh, so if you look at the top panel, uh, the image there shows a collagen uh, 4 coating. And notice how the filaments of the collagen there create this three-dimensional web. And that's much more like what the cells would experience in vivo than they would in a flat coating on a uh, standard conventional plate. We've also developed uh, uh, protocols to enable you to take Alvatex and coat onto its surface a very thin gel. Uh, the scanning electron micrograph on the left shows a collagen coating. That renders the top surface flat, upon which you can then culture uh, simple epithelia. And the images show, the bottom image there shows uh, a CACO2 uh, colon adenocarcinoma uh, cell line. Uh, growing on a thin layer of collagen above the Alvatex matrix. And the beauty of doing that is that you can also put inside the Alvatex matrix uh, a co-culture of uh, cells such as fibroblasts to mimic the submucosal tissues uh, such as the lamina propria. I'll say some more words about co-culture towards the end. Um, this is another uh, a technique we've developed in partnership with a company called Mirus, who specialise in the development of transfection reagents. And uh, a reagent has been uh, developed and now commercialised to enable you to transfect your cells when growing in three-dimensional culture. So that is also available. Uh, I've already mentioned that Alvatex is compatible with a variety of commercial kits. Uh, so on the left, for example, we have examples of cell viability assay for MTT. We also have protocols online for MTS, uh, Animal Blue, XTT, and we also have the cell titer glow up there as well soon. So that's just a snapshot, if you like, of the compatibility of Albatex with many standard uh, methods and commercial kits. Um, on the right, we have protein and nucleic acid, which has been isolated directly from the 3D culture using uh, standard commercial lysis buffers. So it's not necessary to isolate your cells. You can, for the majority of assays, uh, lyse your cells in situ inside the scaffold and then extract the protein and nucleic acid for your downstream assays. And the last one is really to show you that you can uh, determine the number of cells inside Alvatex. And you can do that using a Pico Green assay, which is based on double stranded DNA. So you first of all take your cells in 2D culture, you quantify them by cell counting, and you read off the absorbance using the S for the assay, and then create a standard curve. You then Having grown your cells in 3D, uh, apply the assay, read off the absorbance, and then from the curve determine the cell number. And that's a nice, robust assay as well. So Arbitex is a very versatile technology. And uh, we must not just think of using Arbitex for a single cell population. Uh, of course, in the body, tissues are comprised of multiple cell types, which can which uh, then uh, makes an organ, comprises an organ, of course. And interactions between cells is really important uh, in terms of uh, cell growth, differentiation, and function. And we can start to begin to mimic some of these processes in vitro using Alvatex technology. And it's very versatile in that sense, in that uh, we can mix two cell populations prior to seeding. 
and that can be done either in the well insert or in the base of the, the well in a plate. It's possible to have a 3D culture in an insert and a 2D culture in the bottom of the well of the plate, or three, two 3Ds, one in the insert and one in the bottom of the plate, or indeed having the two 3D cultures touching. So there are a variety of different approaches that one can use. And here's an example. This is a cancer uh, example here, uh, which I just wanted to finish off with. And what we've done in this case is in panel A, we first of all, for seven days, established a culture of fibroblasts. And you'll see them growing throughout the matrix. And these are like contact inhibited cells, so they don't uh, come really very close together. They are quite spread out. Um, and what we find is uh, they produce these nice, uh, nice uniform cultures and produce nice extracellular matrix. And then on the surface of that culture, we can see uh, cancer cells. And in this case, we've uh, looked at uh, the two colon adenocarcinoma lineages, uh, SW480 and 620. And this is serving the basis of a new novel um, sun invasion assay that we're developing. So we can study the migration of the SW480 cells and 620 cells in amongst the fibroblasts, which are in a way mimicking the mesenchymal tissues. So that's uh, the basis of a webinar which will, I will give in December. So also do look out for that one. OK, so in summary, Alvatex enables you to recreate a more natural growth environment for your cells in vitro. It creates uh, cultures uh, and tissue uh, which resemble tissues uh, as you would find in vivo. It's a versatile platform and it's designed for routine three-dimensional cell culture. So anybody currently doing cell culture using conventional 2D methods will be able to use Albatex technology alongside. It is uh, easy to use. Uh, it's backed up by uh, a vast wealth of technical information via our website, but also by our technical specialists who are available uh, at the end of the telephone. Um, it's widely available in different formats. Uh, we're continuing to expand our product portfolio and additional formats are being added uh, as we go forward. Importantly, Alvatex has been exemplified uh, in a, a, a wide range of applications. So if you're interested in other areas, please do look out uh, for additional webinars, but also do visit our website and in particular our application note section where you'll see uh, seven uh, or so applications for specific areas, uh, including the application note for cancer cell cytotoxicity, which is now also available.